everybody. Welcome to Before College TV Live. I am here today with five special guests from Riverside High School in Boardman, Oregon. We have guests who attend colleges all over the state. They are here to share with us their college experiences, what it was like leaving Riverside and going out into the rest of the world. And it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. I'm not even quite sure what Ruby and Abby and Daniel and Luis and Faith are going to say, but I know it's going to be interesting. Ruby, I want to start with you. If we could go back to Ruby, high school Ruby, tell me, like, who are you, Ruby? Who was high school Ruby? I was like the leader type, I guess, because I was like the class president and stuff. And I would like volunteer in the community and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, like for the most part, I was just like very social with most of my class and some, I mean, most people, I guess. Yeah. Did you like high school? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Honestly, you hesitated. It was, it was all right. <laughs> it wasn't that, is, has college been better than high school? Oh yeah, for sure. Definitely. And you are at the University of Portland and you are a, you're going to be a junior, right? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. So we're going to hear all about the University of Portland. Let's move on to Luis. Luis, tell me about you. What year did you graduate Riverside? Uh, it was 2018. Right, 2018. And describe you. Describe high school Luis. <laughs> high school Luis. Um, quiet, reserved, very spontaneous, uh, very um, kind of... I guess in the background, not really like well known and kind of just minding my own business. And I was a little weird in high school, so I got it. I was a little weird. Did you stop being weird? Uh, probably not, but I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> working on not. I think I've been weird my whole <laughs> life and uh, I will never not be weird. So did you know Ruby? Ruby, what year did you graduate? 2018. Okay, so you were classmates, right? Yeah, she was a head honcho. She was like that intimidating leader that if you approach, she'd probably get you in trouble for doing something. So, yeah, that sounds that sounds intimidating, <laughs> right? So that, that's good, that's good no. I didn't consider myself intimidating, so no. well, <laughs> Lu Luis seems to think you were <laughs> in a good way. There's nothing bad with that, right? Yeah, no. <laughs> in a good way. So, Abby, tell us about high school you. I like to think of myself as an introverted extrovert in high school. Um, I was pretty outgoing, kind of blunt, wasn't afraid to say it was on my mind. And I kind of talked to anyone and everyone, but also kept to myself. The hothead of high school. <laughs> oh, Harlan, if you thought Ruby was intimidating, like, <laughs> Abby was like a five times. She's like 2.0. She's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> really? Uh, how did Abby, how did how did you find her intimidating? Like what was intimidating about her? Well, I was, I was pretty soft in high school. So, uh, like every time I approached Abby, I remember she'd just like either ignore me, which was most of the time, or like say something very kind of like ended, ended quite ended open questions. Like very like, okay, like, yes, no, like very just straightforward to the point. Right. Well, that's what you said. You are, you are honest and you put it out there. And that can be yeah. that can some people like that. Some people find that to be rough. So Many this, people did not like it. Yeah. Woo. Wow. Okay, good. <laughs> well, you know, I think it's helpful for someone who's watching this, let's say even in middle school or in high school, and they fit that same personality where people are like, you know, they just don't like me for my bluntness. Like, do, how do you work through that? Like, what advice would you give to someone who, who feels that they can relate to you? Kind of since leaving high school, I've definitely mellowed out. Um, sometimes you got to be wise with what you say because there's some repercussions to everything. Um, and you, you kind of got to judge who you feel can take your you know words honestly and not hurt their feelings. And other times you kind of got to get over it. And if it's you know going to benefit that person more to tell them the honest truth than sugarcoat something, then that's just in my opinion telling the truth yeah so you've changed how you communicate and who you'll communicate that bluntly to 
over the years. Definitely. <laughs> I did that. Definitely. That's, that's interesting. Are you and Luis friendly? Are you are you all friends? No. I would like, say so. Yeah. Yeah. This is nice. We can also do a lot of healing today too. Um, <laughs> Sorry, <if there's>... Luis. <laughs> <laughs> I was just playing. I mean, you're a great person. <laughs> right. That's great. Well, I I like that you can joke around, Daniel. Tell me a little bit about high school you. What year did you graduate? I graduated in 2018 as well. So you're all, this is beautiful. It's a reunion. And Daniel, describe high school you. <laughs> I'd say I was decently known by some people, most people. Um, I was pretty nice for the most part, somewhat charismatic, but I felt like I was kind of known just for being maybe a try hard or something and just trying my hardest in what I do. And that brings us to Faith. So Faith, tell us a little bit about you. When did you graduate? Tell us about high school you. Well, I'm the youngin' of the group. I graduated last year in 2019. And I tried to be pretty involved in high school, honestly, because I just wanted it to look good for like scholarship applications because I knew that I would need some stuff on my resume and everything. And I played a lot of sports and I did wish that I would have made more like to get a little personal here I wish I would have got like made more better like friendships because I feel like since I just moved there freshman year and I feel like I didn't really establish better like more friendships because I also just got in a relationship right when I moved there so I feel like I didn't really I have a tendency to spend a lot more time on the relationship that I'm with and not the friendship. So that's something that I would have changed like in the past for sure. Yeah. Cause you know, friends are more for everything. Right. So you, yeah. you ended up getting romantically <laughs> involved with someone once you moved to Boardman and yeah. that became more of your focus in making friends. Did, are you still together with that person who you dated when you moved to town? No, we're not together anymore. Oh, so sorry. <laughs> I, 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 I imagine you probably still aren't together after all those years. But yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, so that's good advice. If you are someone who is new to dating, to make sure you stay connected with friends. In addition, mm -hmm. because, right, those friends last forever. Daniel, you really agree with that, right? You agree that the friendships are important, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, good. We'll dig more into that. So, Daniel, I would love to know, I would love to know when you decided to go to college. Was this something that you were thinking about when you were in middle school? Uh, is it something that you decided to do in high school? Tell me when you decided to do that and how you ended up at, where are you now? University of Portland. You're at the University of Portland. So tell me, yeah that progression like where did it start this actually took place my freshman year of high school i got back my first report card from high school and my sister she's a year and four months older than me and all throughout her life she's been a 4.0 student straight a's in everything that she does and when i got my first report card i got a 3.3 gpa from high school and i was pretty ecstatic with that i mean i was i was fine i was i knew i could try harder but for the most part i was pretty happy with myself i get back home my mom and my sister sit me down for a really serious talk. Uh, I get my phone taken away. I get grounded for like a few weeks. And after that, I kind of realized the importance of college and why my family wanted me to do better. I think that's when I decided that was like a really pivotal time in my life. And I decided to really just kind of try harder throughout high school. Is that because you wanted your phone back? <laughs> Some somewhat, <laughs> right? But but a three like I think a three point three is is pretty is pretty darn good. But why was it that a three point three wasn't good enough? And and what is it that they said to you during the sit down? The main argument was that I wouldn't be able to graduate with my honors diploma throughout high school. But I think you need a three point two five. I'm not sure. But anyways, um, they just kind of understood that. If I got lazy right now and, oh, 3.5, <laughs> Mrs. Rosen said 3.5. So I yeah. just kind of, they understood that if I got lazy right now and developed bad habits that in the long run, it, couldn't, it wouldn't benefit me. Yeah. And then you are a Ford scholar. Is that correct? 
Yes, that's correct. But, right. So those grades helped you to end up getting a scholarship and really helping yourself out, right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, they really helped me out a lot. Yeah. Well, I'm going to learn more about that because I think that's fascinating. Do they pay for all of your college? They pay 90% of your unmet cost. So but, pretty much most of it. Yeah, that's amazing. So it's nice for people to know that that's something. And I know that we have two scholars here. Ruby, I want to I want to learn about you a little bit. And we're, we're going to get to everybody. Um, and if you have anything to add when I'm talking to someone, you know, all of you, please feel free to chime in uh, because I'd love to hear about how you got your phone taken away or um, any of the problems that you dealt with, especially with your family. Uh, <laughs> I'm always... I mean, I laugh, but like, that's a huge part of this, of this is fa what your family wants versus what you want. So Ruby, tell me when you decided that college was something that was important to you. My mom, she's like a single mom. And um, she always told us that like education was important. So she, we always had that mentality that we have to go further. But like what really changed me to actually want to do it myself was probably like my eighth grade year because my sister was doing her associate's degree. And just seeing her kind of motivated me and really like pushed me to do to do that as well and take those college classes in high school and stuff. Yeah. And then did you did you think that you were going to be able to go to college? Was there any doubt in your mind or was it always that, you know, I can do this. I'm cut out for this. The cost is always was always a factor that always scared me, um, but it never made me feel like I couldn't do it. So I always felt like I, I would be there. Like I knew that I was kind of meant to be in college. Yeah. But the cost you said made you think that, you know, this might not be something that's possible for me. When did you realize that the cost wasn't going to be something to keep you from going? Once I got the sports scholarship, pretty much, I was my senior year, the last, before I got um, given the scholarship, I was pretty much considering going to community college. Um, wow. But that really changed everything to allow me to go to a four year. Yeah, by getting that scholarship. And, and I'd love to learn. I mean, I'm fascinated that two of you got the scholarship. So, I mean, clearly the Ford Foundation knows about RHS and, you know, you guys have been there. Has anyone else gotten a scholarship after you from your high school? A Ford Scholar? Oh, there's others. So, yeah. like, so this is great. So for someone who's, who's younger and going through this, you know, Ruby can help you learn about this, right? Are you open to sharing your journey with other people? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, you totally. And Daniel, what about you? Yeah, definitely. Awesome. So Luis, um, did you get a scholarship? Just one in particular that, that kind of got me through college and it's called the dream.us. How'd you get that, man? Uh, to be honest, I really owe a lot of, uh, where I'm at right now to, uh, Mrs. Rosen. And I call her Mrs. Rosen, but I, she told me it's cool if I call her Lisa. But uh -huh. um, yeah, like she, man, she pushed me in like so many ways. And like truly like that scholarship, I didn't even have any idea what it was. And she's like, hey, you should apply to this. I was like, uh, and I, I was kind of slacking. So I didn't even apply to like the last week, I think. And, and so I applied in May. I remember May because it's like one of the highlights of my life. And she... Like I was in her office and I checked my email and it said I got I got the scholarship, which which was basically like a full ride to uh, Western Oregon. Wow, that's yeah. that's crazy. I mean, that's a that's a huge value. Are you like a brilliant guy? I mean, did you get like straight A's? Have you always been kicking butt academically? Uh, to be honest, I think like I. I really don't consider myself smart, but I think it's just like, I've always had friends who've pushed me. So like Danny and just, there's these two iconic twins that we just want to, I mean, everybody knows. The iconic twins. Yeah. <laughs> iconic, tw iconic twins are me and Kevin. And like, ever since we were young, like we've always pushed each other. So I think I owe a lot of like who I am as a person to them. <clears throat> Mies and Kevin and Mrs. Rosen, who, who helped you to do that. When did you think that you could go to college? When was that something that you realized was within reach? Uh, I, f I felt like it was always within reach just because my family, like bo both of my parents are immigrants. So I, um, 
I've always felt a, a huge burden on my back to kind of, um, kind of just step into that role of like, okay, like my parents are immigrants, like somebody's going to have to get an education and kind of just like make something out of all their suffering. So and I guess it was me. So I, I guess I've always carried that way. So I guess it wasn't really like, if I'm going to go to college, it was more of like, how am I going to get there? Right. And you knew that there was going to be some way and you surrounded yourself with people who were going on that same journey, right? Like these are these people, like your friends that you surrounded yourself with, they all ended up going on to college or getting an associate degree. Is that accurate? Yeah, definitely. I think like you, you surround yourself with strong, positive minded people and you'll, you'll be just like them. So. Right. And then on the flip side, if you surround yourself with people who are not motivated or are breaking laws or are doing things that, you know, just aren't going to get you where you want to go. Like, do you, are there people from your class who have followed that path as well? Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, there's, there's some people that come to mind. Yeah. I mean, we don't have to like, I'm not looking to like, you know, <laughs> there's, there's like no judgment in anything. It's just who you surround yourself with tends to be who you become. Yeah. You know, that just tends to be how it works. So if people are like, Oh, you know, it's just for now. It's like, nah, you know, like you need your, your twins, your, who do you need? Like, what are their names again? The dynamic duo? Uh, it's Mies and Kevin and Brock. That's, Mies, that's the other guy. Mies, Kevin and Brock, but the twins are Mies and Kevin. Yeah. I mean, that's Mies and Kevin. You just added Brock now. Yeah. <laughs> you just <threw> Brock in there, <laughs> right? Because Brock was not part of this before, but now Brock's part of it, which is cool. We got some people. Nice. Um, that whole, there's, there's a whole part of, of the child of an immigrant. I've, I've done a lot of these conversations and I find that it's really remarkable because not only are you doing things for you, a lot of times you're doing things for so many people. And when you struggle or when you come up short, it's not just you disappointing yourself, it's you failing all those who have supported you. And I think that's a really heavy burden to carry. And I'd love to learn how you are able to still live a life that's about you and at the same time live a life where you are able to acknowledge the sacrifices of those around you because really i mean you need to be happy um you need to do things for you and, and we're going to get into that piece faith tell me about you i know that you're starting your nursing degree you're you're on your path and you you got into nursing school right the nursing yes, program I did. <laughs> right. So was that always something that you were planning on doing? When did you decide that was what you were going to do? Um, you know, walk us through that. I always knew that I wanted to go into the medical field and I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do, but I made a decision pretty early on that I wanted to become a nurse and I really look up to my cousin too. She went into nursing school. So I think that kind of played like a subconscious role in why I went into nursing just because I admired her so much. But I've always really been interested in biology and that kind of stuff, too. So it just made sense for me. So I, that's always been my path to go to nursing school. And yeah. it kind of worried me because I only applied to two schools. I applied to um, Blue Mountain Community College. And then I also applied to EOU. And so I didn't get into EOU. And that was the first decision that I got was from them so when I found out that I didn't get into EOU I was really stressing and I hate like not knowing anything so when I did get into BMCC that was really a relief for me so you got rejected yeah I did oh this is great I love rejection not that I like seeing mm -hmm. people get rejected but I just think it's such yeah. an important piece so you got rejected and that was upsetting to you uh yeah it, but you got through that. And did you take a gap year from the time you graduated to the time that you're enrolling? Yeah, kind of. That's kind of interesting to me how that happened because all of the nursing prerequisites usually take a year. And I did a lot of them during high school. And so I only had one term left. So that was my fall term. And then I had um, winter and spring kind of like off to do like whatever I wanted. So I chose to kind of further um, my preparation for nursing school. Yeah. So I got my nursing assistants during winter term. 
Okay. And then spring term, I didn't do anything. <laughs> and I tried wow. to work, but COVID was just being stupid. So I couldn't work. Yeah, that's but, brutal. Yeah, that's right. It. <laughs> so you had a, this, this little bit of a different kind of year. Uh, mm-hmm. Abby, so you are a student at the University of Oregon, right? Correct. And I would love to know your high school journey of how you ended up at the University of Oregon. And was that always, was that always where you wanted to go? Did you always know you were going to go to college? How did you decide on this path? School has always been kind of an outlet for me. So I always knew school after high school was going to be something. Um, but I never knew how to get there. Um, no one in my family before has really succeeded at it, I would say. Um, financial stressors is definitely a factor in that. Um, I just knew it was something that I was going to do no matter what. I was going to get through it. Um, I decided to go to University of Oregon for the first time <laughs> when I went to a program called Young Entrepreneurs Business Week. And thanks to Danny and Ruby, who introduced me to this program, um, they, that was what the main reason why I chose University of Oregon and what I wanted to study, because I had no idea what I wanted to be. I wanted to be everything. <laughs> and so um, this program really helped me find my strengths and like what I really liked to do. So um, that is why I chose University of Oregon and why I chose to study business. Um, so thank you, Danny and Ruby, for showing me that program that forever changed my life and will forever hold a piece of my heart. Um, so Who's Danny? Tell me a little bit about, about Danny. About Danny? Yeah. Danny is one of my uh, best buds. We've known each other since we were kids. He sounds so. great. Yeah, Danny's a good guy. And Ruby. And Ruby, Danny and Ruby showed you the way. They helped me define my way. There was, in my head, there was always a way no matter what, and they helped me define it. Yeah, well, that's great. I see a theme that's happening here of just the people who you've, you've, you've met and how you are all in a really cool place. Like, you're really in an interesting place. And Abby, were you able to afford college? You know, I know you mentioned the financial piece was something that worried you. How are you able to pay for college? That was definitely a factor. Um, you know, my siblings in the past, that was always something that was a roadblock for them. And I knew in my head it was not going to be one for me. I was going to get through it no matter what. So grades were a huge thing from, um, for me because that's the only way that I knew I would get money to go. Yeah. So, you know, just like Danny, like you got to get grades, good grades. And that was always something that we pushed each other for. Yeah. Um, there was kind of a big group of us that kind of pushed each other uh, to get good grades and who who would be the top or who got an A plus or it was like came down to A minus A plus with us and right. that's you know we kind of pushed each other but that's what got me through college was my grades in high school and yeah. my you know how active I was in the community. So did you get so tell me where you got the money because if you're a freshman or sophomore. And you're thinking, oh, my gosh, this is going to be so expensive. And, you know, I don't know if I'm going to get a scholarship. Uh, how do you get the money? Like, tell me how you got it. You apply to every single scholarship you possibly can. And you could apply to hundreds and only get one. And, you know, that's all you get. But that's worth not, you know, it's worth more than nothing. What about you? How many did you apply to? Actually, I'd love to get specific if there's community scholarships or anything that maybe someone else can, can tap into. So I um, was awarded the U um, from University of Oregon. It's called the Pathway Scholarship. And it's for first-gen um, students with uh, disabilities. Like, There's all sorts of parameters for it, um, but mostly for first-generation students. And it also has to do with your FAFSA um, and grades. So that is how I got that scholarship. And it covers all your tuition um, for, you know, four years. Wow. That's a huge deal. Yeah. Like, were you freaking out when you got that? Um, It was kind of a moment. (laughs) There was a lot of scholarships that I didn't get, so you know, it was definitely a lifesaver and was also a huge factor as to why I also went to University of Oregon because they offered me the most money. So So you got rejected by a bunch of other scholarships. A ton. Yeah. And you got your heart broken a little bit. Oh, definitely. 
Oh, really? Was there one in particular that was really devastating where you called up Faith and you were crying or, you know, Danny or Ruby, <laughs> like, oh my gosh, this isn't going to work out. This is a disaster. Uh, it was the Ford scholarship. Oh, and they got it. Yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, I was happy for them because they both deserve it. They're both hardworking students. So it's just another roadblock. Right. But that's tough to have two of your closest friends get it and then you don't get it. Yeah. Right. I mean, I mean it would be selfish for me to take away their moment. So, yeah. Well, you're so, I mean, you're very, you're very kind and I can tell, I mean, <laughs> um, and, and when I ask a question like that, it's, it's not an easy answer and it's very painful not to get that. But I, I love that you were in a place where your closest friends got this scholarship that you really wanted. You didn't, but you didn't stop. Right. Yeah. No, and, I didn't stop. I mean, there's plenty of other roadblocks down the road, but We'll hear about that. And, okay. you know, everyone has their own plan and our plans aren't the same. And, you know, everyone, you know, we're all going to get different scholarships. We're all going to have different hoops to jump through. And it's the, just a matter of finishing. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's great. And I know that you only wish these people who are so important to you well, but you ended up getting the U of O pathway scholarship because your GPA was high and now you have uh, a, a ride there and you're going to graduate, which is, which is so beautiful. Um, when it comes to the financial piece and students who think, I can't afford this, and, and, and also to the students who maybe don't have the GPA, I know there are also scholarships based on your, uh, you know, your parents or your ethnicity or you know, all these different factors of, of, of just you know, your heritage and, and gender and all these other things. Um, what would you say to those students who are thinking, oh my gosh, I'm not going to be able to afford this. You know, money's going to be the greatest, money's the greatest obstacle. In my head, I would say money comes and goes, no matter how many scholarships you get. Something's life's going to throw a curveball at you and money's going to come and go. So take the opportunity to, you know, give the best life that you can for yourself and whether you think that's education or not, go for it. Yeah. Ruby, Luis, Daniel, Faith, what about money? How do people find the money? Do you have any more money advice? Money, 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 money. I would say community college is honestly like such a good option because like how Ruby said she was considering community college before she got that scholarship. That's like totally something that I think every student sh should consider. And like I told my mom too, when because I applied to a university and I also applied to a community college, and I even kind of told my mom, even if I get into EOU, I would definitely consider actually just going to BMCC instead, just because it's so much cheaper. Like I honestly like can't believe how much cheaper it is. It's kind of insane. <laughs> yeah, like how much to, cheaper? To piggyback off that though, yeah. a lot of students have like this. You know, community college has a stigma that it's not as good as a four-year university or this expensive top-tier university. And that's totally not true. Like, the level of, you know, education that you get from any school is better than nothing if education is your goal in the end. Mm -hmm. So go wherever you can. Yeah. Do you, Luis, do you have anything to add to that, or Ruby or Daniel? Yeah, I would even back up what Abby said about like there's a stigma or like a mis misconception that colleges don't offer the, offer the same education. But man, I would even challenge that and say that it's, it's a lot better because you can interact with your teachers. Like I, I have so many friends who have like, I don't know, 50 plus, 100 plus students in the class. And it's like they have TAs grading their papers and like you never even t talk to the teacher. So. Right. So the idea of going to a community college and having that close interaction and being able to save all that money and being able to transfer grades uh, is, is really powerful. I think, thank you, Faith, for bringing that up because I think a lot of people don't think that. And then I know there are also a lot of students who uh, maybe it's their junior year or senior year are like, oh my gosh, I really want this. Because you know, so much of this I think is about you guys wanting what you want. How does the role of your parents play in? Like, you know, are you doing what you want or are you doing what your parents want? And anybody can answer this. You know, how, do, how did you decide as opposed to listening what everybody tells you what you should do? Um, for me personally, like I had like that same kind of mental uh, mentality like Louise, that like our parents are immigrants, like it's our duty to pretty much be in college and really get further um, for them. 
but like I've kind of like unpacked that and seeing like it's like it's still me you know like this is me personally wanting to push myself to do it and like yeah my parents are obviously like there's I'm motivated because they keep calling me and like oh you know I'm glad you're there but honestly it's like it's for me in reality you know and sometimes I just kind of have to realize that like the pressures that you put on yourself because of that reason is like it brings you down sometimes so yeah I think that's definitely changed so you, you realize it is for you. Your parents have influenced your decision, but ultimately you're doing it because it's what you want. Is that true for, for you, Luis and, and Daniel as well? Yeah, because I know Daniel, you had a lot of pressure when you were taken down, you know, freshman year, you had that sit down. That's like, <laughs> you got all your stuff <laughs> taken away. But you you decided that you want to do what you're doing for you and your major is about you and what you do when you're on campus is about you. Is that accurate? Yeah. Like, like Ruby said, I think at first it's always kind of like you have that motivation to, to do better for your family. And quite honestly, I think that's a great foundation to kind of build off of that. And then once you kind of experience that throughout college, you realize that, wow, you know, this is amazing. And you realize your potential. And that's when it all kind of just starts to click. Yeah. That's awesome. Now, I know you all got in and you all have gone and you've persevered. A lot of students go and they come back home. A lot of students get into schools where they have to leave Boardman and they decide they're not going to go. I don't know if you've had friends who went through that or if you went through that, but why do you think it's so hard for some people to leave Boardman and pack their stuff stuff and, and go to college away from home? For me personally... I'm such an independent person. I was so ready to leave Boardman and so ready to be out on my own. And as soon as I got out there, I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, I also think where we grew up and how close knit our community is, is a huge factor. Cause we all know each other. We all know where we all live. We can, you know, go to anyone's house and know who lives there. And you go to, you know, a big place like Eugene where we're not used to this. We're not used to, classrooms of 500 plus people you really lose yourself and second guess what you really are doing with your life so that's a huge huge reason for me where I was like am I really doing this do I should I be doing this should I just go back home um because I definitely had those thoughts I mean anyone would ever have those thoughts and family is such a huge part to me and it was hard being away it's definitely hard on my mom so it's yeah. you know family is a huge factor Yeah, I was thinking that as you were all talking about just how close your family, your families are, and and also being children of immigrant families, you know, your your family is everything. So leaving is very hard. So for those students who, you know, you want to go away, but are torn and are afraid because they're going to miss those things. How do you manage that? How can you make that transition from high school to Western Oregon to University of Portland to Eugene? How do you how do you do that and stay? Uh, Luis, was it easy for you? Was it hard for you? How did you make your friends once you got to campus? So it was in the beginning. It was pretty tough. Uh, I think uh, to answer your question, I think. You, you just really need to be open-minded because when I first got here, like the way people thought and like the way people, like the paradigms in which they view the world, like it's so vastly different from our tightly in the community. That it just like, it was like, it's like I almost had to like just give up on just one way. And there's like so many, so many ways people think. And so, but in terms of community, yeah, my first year when I was here, I didn't really have, or like half year, I didn't really have a community. And it was just kind of like you described yourself and you said that, you know, it was pretty much you and you were depressed and alone. And uh, that was kind of me for for the first half of my freshman year. And that kind of uh, ties into like just mistakes that I did in college because I, I was dating this one girl and I made a lot of mistakes. So um, Will you tell us a little bit about that. I'd be, I'm, I'm curious to know you know, what happened, the mistakes you made, what you learned so other people can learn from them. 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, so in short, I, I cheated on my girlfriend in, in college. And uh, right. yeah, so like I carried a lot of that weight, a lot of the, that guilt and shame for, for a pretty long time. And uh, but man, it was just like, then after like January, I got in touch with like community. And uh, I have friends, like close brothers who I'm like, I, I would even say like, we're going to be friends for life. So, and then, yeah, like just surround yourself with like community and friends and just find purpose in what you do yeah and, and the people around you so so you got to campus and you were in a relationship and then obviously th- something happened and then you didn't really have a lot of other close friends at the time during that first semester so mm-hmm. where where are the places i talk a lot about places this this is a great question for everybody um so you get on campus and you meet people and the way you meet people tends to be you put yourself in places and places are where you sweat uh exercise you know working out whatever just just doing things it's where you play um you know hanging out having fun it's where you sweat play pray it's where you pray i think there's some people here who like to do a little praying too so sweat play pray where you live your residence hall where you learn inside the classroom where you work as well, and then also where you find things you love to do and, and you meet people you love to be around. So places are where you sweat, play, pray, live, learn, lead, love, and work. Sweat, play, pray, live, learn, lead, love, and work. So Luis, when you got to, uh, let's see. So Luis, when you got to Western Oregon University, where are the places you made your three closest friends and how long did it take you to find them? Yeah, it took me a while. And like you were talking about, like, put yourself in situations where you'll know you'll start meeting people and kind of put yourself out there. So I didn't really do that my first term here. And uh, there's one, uh, this uh, a ministry on campus called Resonate. And yeah, I would describe my three closest friends. Uh, one guy is a Hawaiian, co- coolest guy I know, one of my closest friends. And I the reason I talked so much about like, you know, surround yourself with people who, um, who are walking like in the same, same path as you, like this guy, I, I find myself talking the same way he does and using his type of slang. So that, that was interesting. And then another one is uh Christian and, um, yeah, he was there when I was, uh, kind of carrying a lot of that guilt and shame from, uh, my past mistakes. And then, um, my my other one is probably my roommate who was here right now. So, yeah, yeah. he's been a good guy. He's been a great guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you, the places, so the resonate church. So that's a place where you found a lot of connection. Yeah, that that was one of the places. I also, oddly enough, I found connections and in a fraternity too. So, oh, so kind of like, fraternity. Yeah. Was that a surprise that you joined a fraternity? Yeah, it kind of was, but it was, it was like a year and a half ago. So yeah, Yeah. so that was another, another place. And um, I just want to ask you one more question about the tough transition. Was there a point where you were thinking of quitting or going home? Oh yeah. I was like a, I wouldn't even say a string. I was like a hair away from dropping out just because I I was so burdened and I was just wanting to quit everything. So, and to be honest, the only thing that held me together was, uh, going back to my family. So what happened when you went back and how did you continue to stay at Western Oregon? Yeah. So, uh, uh kind of just pressing on and, um, like just kind of like how Ruby was saying, like we carry that, that weight on our back. So if it hadn't been for that weight, I think the, just the emotional turmoil would have, uh, kind of made me drop out. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I would just encourage anybody who's listening just to like press on because like it, it's going to get better. And I think community really helps. So did you find a counselor? Was there a therapist? Did you do something to help you? Cause I know mental health, especially when it comes to first gen students can sometimes be uh, a hard thing to balance. Uh, no, I, I didn't really find a counselor. No, I just had a uh, close friends. Yeah. And you got through it, but you were so close. I find most students, have that moment where they almost leave. And the fact, and the thing is that like, Luis, you had a full ride, man, right? Like you're on a full ride scholarship, right? And you were still thinking of leaving. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was definitely, uh, I mean, it was just like self-infliction. So 
I'm not in any way trying to justify what I've done, but it was kind of like just just carrying a lot of that guilt and shame. You know what? I I, I think that you are obviously a very different person than where you, than who you were four years ago or however many years ago. And the, and you know nobody deserves to feel shame or no one deserves to feel pain. We all make mistakes and we all learn from them. And uh, the beauty of living life is that we do things and we learn from them. And if we do nothing, nothing happens. So understanding and seeing just like, even you talk about this, like, dude, I could tell, you know, it's painful to even talk about, but you clearly have learned, right? And it's yeah. an important part of your life, right? Yeah, I, I definitely do think I'm free from it, from, from everything of my past. So like, I, I truly believe I walk in, in freedom now. Yeah, it's, I mean, that's part of the process. It's so painful. Ruby, tell me about your transition from high school to college. Was it easy? Was it hard? And tell me how you made your, your three closest friends. For me, it was really easy because I had been doing like camps and stuff, which really like established that I just wanted to leave Boardman because like that really set everything like, oh, I was meeting really cool people that were really open minded, which I could like hardly find in like our small rural community. Um, I mean, obviously to an extent, but um, that's like pretty much what said it that I really wanted to leave. And then I just knew that I wanted to be in Portland. So it was great. Um, I was just excited mostly, like not really scared. Um, but for my three friends, I definitely met them at UP Connections and that's like pretty much all of them and through my scholarship actually. Um, so we had a conference pretty much before school started um, for my scholarship and I met two of them from that. And then I did another, it's kind of like a weekend before orientation weekend um, and we just went camping pretty much. And it was like the best thing because I met them. I talked to them further um, there and then I met my roommate there and it just, we just all connected really well. And I like met so many other people, which really established a bunch yeah. of more friendships. That's great. So, I mean, it sounds like it was a really easy transition for you. Um, you didn't mm -hmm. like bottom out or freak out or think of leaving at any point. I mean, no, not it, not to leave, but I mean, I, they being, setting those friendships in the beginning of school really set everything that I had that support system right off the bat, pretty much, yeah. which really helped me. Yeah. So Daniel, tell me about your first few weeks on campus. Uh, did you make friends? Was it easy for you? Was it hard for you? The transition from college or from high school to college was a little more easier because I did do a lot of camps throughout the summer, throughout my high school years. But it was a little more difficult in terms of my own self. Um, I as well had a relationship, a long-term relationship, and it was just kind of hard for me to focus on making friends. I was always just so focused academically, and I never really kind of got out, th out there. I would go to class. I definitely worked out a lot because it distracted me a lot, but I just kind of focused on that relationship a lot. And it kind of put me in sort of a shell where I wasn't really able to blossom until that relationship ended. And afterwards, um, I did make some friendships. Uh, one of my best friends who I'm actually living with this upcoming year, he was my RA on my hall. Nice. His name's Victor. He's a great guy. He's a nurse. He, just an amazing person. But just and for me, it was kind of I was already put in that place. So I didn't have to kind of go out there and meet those people. But I can only imagine how it would have been if I kind of push myself to maybe get out there and um, try different things. Yeah. So what advice, this is a question for everybody. What advice would you give? And we can start with you, Daniel, to someone who's in a relationship. I mean, should they end the relationship? Should they stay in the relationship? If they stay in the relationship, should they make sure they have a life outside of the relationship? Like how does someone balance that in high school thinking about college? Yeah. So I think, um, I saw a quote a few months ago. It said, um, the biggest lesson isn't from falling in love. It's from falling out of love. And I think I realized a lot of that when that relationship ended. I was able to really focus on myself and do all these crazy experiences. Like I had the opportunity to study abroad and just different stuff like that that really allowed me to blossom into the person that I am today. So, um, you know, think about your relationship um, and kind of be honest with yourself and also be honest with each other. Yeah. Anybody have anything to add to that? 
Any relationship advice for high schoolers making that transition to college? No, I, I would say trust your. Oh, go ahead, Louis. No, go, go ahead, Faith. You're we'll good. both of you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I would say to trust your gut, like on all of anything, to just really trust your gut, because like there were times, of course, where like I didn't really know like if I wanted to stay in the relationship or if I wanted to end it, and that's something like to get a little more personal again. Like I kind of like prayed about that and then then I got like a gut feeling and then you kind of just know and for especially because if you're in high school too because I was in like kind of the same relationship for all of high school so I feel like I experienced a lot more after like I left that relationship but yeah to not and to not be afraid of if you think something is like if you think you're limiting yourself if you're in that relationship if you feel like you can experience more and like there's more out there involving like your happiness and stuff if you feel like you can be happier then i would definitely say ch like chase that feeling for sure yeah scary it's scary to leave that thing that's safe which i mm -hmm. which i think especially when you're in a time of change Luis, what did you have to add to that uh, i was just gonna just iterate on what danny said um I like just be honest with yourself and what you want and i felt like with me i just wasn't honest and i was immature so um and kind of going off of what faith was saying too um like yeah just be totally transparent with what you want and uh in truth it might just be best to be single throughout your college life just so you can focus on yourself and uh just, man just grow with with friends like kind of what faith was saying earlier like that's the most important thing so and then, like, in the future when you're more, like, um, mature, I guess that's the correct word, then, then uh, consider your possibilities. But for the most part, we're, when we're young, we're really naive. So, and we think we know everything. But you don't know everything? <laughs> I thought I, I did once, but I don't. <laughs> Abby, so tell me, your transition to college, was it easy? Was it hard? How did you make your friends? <laughs> I had a very hard transition to college. Um, I didn't know anyone in my first year of college. I was kind of like Luis. I was on the point of dropping out after my first term. Uh, lots of, lots of factors, mostly financial. I had a lot of issues with where I was staying. I didn't stay in dorms. Um, I think I'm the only one who didn't stay in dorms. I'm not sure if Luis did, but I stayed off campus for financial reasons because. Although I got this huge fancy um, scholarship from through Pathway, it didn't cover room and board. And that was a huge reason why my siblings in the past couldn't afford college because room and board is expensive. It's crazy expensive. So I had to do an exemption to live off of campus and then I couldn't find a job. I, you know, still needed funds to come in and scholarships only lasted so long. So it was a huge, um, factor for me caused a lot of stress. I was going home every other weekend. <laughs> and for me, that's a five hour drive. So it was, it was hard. Yeah. So it's hard to make friends when you're not on campus and you're going home every weekend. Yeah. And you know, another like social aspect, I felt super lost. Um, this is like when the introvert side of me comes out, I like to think of myself as very extroverted and outgoing and I don't care what people think of me and everything like that. And then I get to this huge, you know, college and all these people who come from all different places and are just like me and I couldn't find my spot. I couldn't find where I fit in. And so I second guess myself a lot. And there was, you know, I was this close to coming home. Yeah, <laughs> like, why didn't you? Because once I put my mind to something, I finish it. Whether I want to or not, I'm very headstrong. So... Yeah. So how do you do it for someone who's in that position? What did you do? I know you're headstrong, but how are you able to pay for your room and board? How are you able to make it through this year after year? You're now a senior, right? Yeah. Yeah. So like, tell us, like, how do you do that? I want to know. I want other people to know. <laughs> so um, well, with my living situation, I had, you know, something fall through so i had to think of something real quick i stayed in a hotel for the two first two weeks of um school my car got hit the first week you know there's a ton of 
mental factors. Yeah. And you cry a lot. <laughs> you let your emotions out. You let, you know, life happen to you. And what got me through was definitely my savings account. I've yeah. been saving up money since I first got a job. So anyone who's listening to this, save your money, even if it's a dollar or whatever you can put in your savings account. Because yeah. that's what got me through college and that's what saved me. And that's what, you know, kept me going. Did you think of getting any student loans just a little bit each year? I thought about it, but I was also very headstrong on getting through college debt free. Okay. So if it really came down to it, I would have pulled out a loan. But again, I'm headstrong. And when I put my mind to something, I'm going to do it. Right. And so, so I did not pull out a loan. Right. Because your savings. But sometimes I think loans, I don't know if any of you have loans. It sounds like you haven't had to have loans, but do you have friends? Do any of you have friends who have loans or people you know who have loans? My roommates have loans and, you know, they've talked about how they work and everything. It's just something that I didn't want to do myself if, unless right. I absolutely needed it. Right. I think there's also ways to do it where if it's a difference between sleeping in your car or, or being able to eat and not eat and just being able to take a little bit each year uh, with an understanding that you're going to be able to pay that back, it's an investment in you. I think that sometimes um, people don't always see that. Loans are looked at as like, oh, there's this horrible thing, but a small amount that you understand how you're going to pay back and what the investment is can be something that you know people can do. But I'm but I'm, I'm amazed that you made it. I think you all are incredible that you are able to, you know, did it somehow. And it was so easy to not do it, right? Yeah. It was so easy to not do it, but you've continued to do that. So, so Faith, uh, for you, I mean, you have a little bit of a different path, but I'm curious, how have you been able to, you know, balance friendships, relationships? Uh, I assume, are you living at home while attending school? Yeah, I definitely have a different experience because yeah. they all go to universities and I'm community college, you know, and I feel like I kind of did everything in phases. So my first phase was how I did like all a bunch of my classes in high school and I was doing high school as well as college and all that and living at home. And then the fall after I graduated, I did a lot of online classes. So I was still living at home. And I kind of already knew everyone that was, I had one in-person class and I kind of already knew them because it was just biology and that yeah. for nursing, we were kind of all together as a group. And then I did move to Eugene and I lived with Abby for a term because that was when I decided to do my <laughs> CNA. So we were roommates for a little bit and that experience was the first one that I had like moving and getting to meet new people. And that was, I feel like, really rewarding. So I feel like if you have the opportunity to, even if you have like a little bit of time, like I did, to just kind of expand your horizons and experience something new, I would definitely take that opportunity. And then I feel like my next phase, when I start nursing school, I'm going to be moving to an apartment more like long term rather than just three months when I lived in Eugene. So I'm really excited about that. And I feel like this is going to be the biggest transition, too, because I'll be meeting the my classmates that I'm going to be with for two for a whole two years after this. So I'm excited to meet all of them and kind of build those relationships. It'll yeah. definitely be different, though, because my program, I've. I've made like a Facebook group page for all of us to join so we can kind of get to know each other a little bit. And every single person that has joined is r like way older and is married and has kids. And so I'm this like 19 year old and I have like no life experience. So it'll definitely be interesting because I'm really different from them, but. So you'll be surrounded by very wise people who can. Who yeah, can I can get a bunch of advice. <laughs> right, who also want babysitters. So you can make, you can make, <laughs> throw a few jobs at Abby too, if, if, uh, if you're interested, if Abby's interested in that. So I want to know about the academics. Uh, a lot of students will get on campus and they'll be freaked out. Um, a lot of high achieving students, a lot of your you know, high, achiever, high achievers will get to college and, you know, you'll get a grade that isn't what you thought it was supposed to be, or you'll get thrown. Uh, Daniel, it sounds like you got pretty rocked uh, academically. Is that true? Did you ever encounter a rough class, rough grade, and how do you deal with that? My first year, no. 
I think I was really focused academically, but my second year, I, it was actually this past semester, um, I took a class that I felt like I wanted to do, and I kind of wanted to pursue um, that minor. And it ended up being a lot more difficult than I thought. And this was the first time I've ever um, struggled that much in a class. What class? And it was a, a computer science class. Okay. And how bad and did you struggle? <laughs> pretty bad. Well, give I, us the details. Like, we had to do labs for that class. Luis, Luis knows this because I, I reached out to him because Luis is a CS major and he's a, one of my best friends too. So he, he already knows the story. But um, so there was this lab um, and we have to do labs for, for the coding class. And everybody in the CS department at UP is just like a machine, honestly. They, they just like think code, honestly. Like the first day of class, um, they asked us, what does programming mean to us? And I was like, oh, I think you put in some stuff into the computer and the computer does stuff, right? And the kid next to me, he was like, honestly, programming for me is a way of life. And that's when I should have left the class, but I didn't. <laughs> uh, um, I kind of went through it for about like half a semester and I was really struggling with um, a lot of stuff. And I was really stubborn because I never, never experienced this with a class. And I started questioning myself, like, you know, am I not, am I not smart enough to, to even be here? Or um, I, it was just kind of a hard time for me. And I ended up dropping the class. And this was the first ever class I've ever dropped. And I felt really ashamed of myself. I, I was really embarrassed. Um, but I think just looking back on it, I'm, I don't know if I've give up too early, um, but I, I learned a lot from that. And I learned a lot, a lot about myself because I kind of Im imagined myself as this um, person who would never, ever fail a class. And lo and behold, I, I, I dropped out of that class. And it just kind of put a lot of different stuff into perspective for me and what I want to do in life. And what was the end result of that introspection? Just to do stuff that really interests me and not to do stuff that um, either sounds cool or can get you, you know, maybe like a better job or just more like a, a hiring, high paying job. Because that's really the reason why I chose to maybe minor in CS. It wasn't really for me. I think it was for, for other people. Right. So you want to get me, you want to make money and you needed to do the coding and you have this class to do that, but it kicked your butt. And when you called Luis, what, what, would, what did you say? Well, he messaged me throughout the semester telling me like, hey, if you need help, you know, please feel free to reach out. Please feel free to reach out. And I was too embarrassed to let him know that I, I dropped the class. I was like, yeah, yeah, don't worry. Yeah, I'm doing good right now. And I kept telling myself like, I would tell him I'm doing good and I wasn't even taking the class. And it wasn't until this past summer where we were talking and he was asking me about it. Like, hey, how was it? And I was like, honestly, like I didn't even finish the class. And we just kind of talked a little bit about it. And he kind of was vulnerable with me which really helped me out as well. So, Luis, what did you say? Do you remember that conversation? If you're comfortable talking about it. Yeah, I, I, um, I'm not too sure. Maybe Danny can uh, shed light on this, but I think it was uh, that I filled my very first CS class too. So I, I definitely feel like the, um, the struggle of like, like, I guess, like, I thought college was like, I have to be perfect. But in reality, I kind of just go with the flow now, not really caring too much about my classes. Um, yeah, I, I remember Danny, he was, <laughs> I guess, uh, are you calling on me? <laughs> oh, Abby, yeah, just jump, jump in. To make you guys feel better, I also failed the class. So it's okay to not be perfect. <laughs> Which class? Yeah. I failed um, business calculus my first term. Right. And you're a business major. Yes. Right. So I had to pass it. <laughs> the only reason I got through calculus is because I had a friend named Joseph who basically tutored me all the way through. And if Joseph, you're listening to this right now, then you're a blessing because I would have never passed those two classes. How did you find Joseph? He was in my math class. He was, a, he was a shy guy, but he, he was awesome. 
how did he help you, man? Like, how did he know that you needed help? And, 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 you know, how did he do this and save you? <laughs> so we would go over like the final exams and uh, just quizzes because our professor, like just the material on it, I guess. And he would just kind of break it down like step by step, step by step of like how you would solve this and this and this. Um, yeah, it wasn't like, he was just a great guy. So, yeah. You find it sounds like Luis. You find great people, you know. Like it keeps happening to you. How do you keep finding great people to help you? Uh, I guess just like how you were mentioning earlier, just like step step in, and uh, yeah, I guess I, I really don't. I don't have an answer to that. <laughs> it just happens to you, right? That's that's cool. Ruby, did you struggle in the classroom at all? Oh yeah, oh, you I did because you're. You do really well. Like, just to give everyone context, you're like a super high achiever, president of the class. You know, you you look like you got it all together, right? <laughs> Not at all. Oh, I'm so wrong. In, okay. high, in high school, I didn't really care about like the 4.0s. I honestly did not. Okay. I was a uh, get things done kind of person. But yeah. um, in high school, or I mean in college, like I've had to drop two classes already. Um, my one of them was math, which I was already really bad at math anyway, so I didn't really care. I was like, uh -huh. yeah, it's inevitable. But um, my last fall, I had to drop an accounting class, and that was probably the hardest one that hit me because I was kind of isolated from the class, um, and I was, like, really struggling with imposter syndrome in class because I was pretty much the only brown girl and it was really hard on me. And I would just like go after, after class, I'd just go and cry and just like be really upset because no one else could help me because no one else was taking the class. And I'm definitely like a group learner as well. So it was really hard. Yeah. So tell me about being the only brown girl, as you say, and how isolating that was and how you were able to work through that for other people who you know, might, might encounter that. Um, I mean, that one really hit hard because I was pretty much isolated by the people I was sitting with. And that's pretty much where you kind of build your connections with um, for class. Um, but I don't, I was only that class that really made me feel that low. Um, but I, I have another major as well uh, from business. And that one's where I like completely strive. And like, I feel amazing every time I go to class, like I'm excited. And so I kind of just balances it out that maybe this class makes me feel this way, but the other classes, like, I'm still excited to go and I don't feel that way. And sometimes I just have to like work through it that like, it's just pretty much feeling like an imposter, but I'm not, I still deserve to be there. Yeah. Can you explain imposter syndrome so people can understand what that means and what that feels like? It's pretty much when you just don't feel like you belong or you deserve to be there. And, um, but in reality, like, that's not, that's not really the case. Like, maybe you're just like struggling with their confidence and stuff like that. How many of you have felt imposter syndrome during your college experience? Yeah. All four of I you. Don't, I don't really not, know. Not you yet, Faith, but you will experience it. You've got these tough classes coming yeah. your way. That <laughs> I know, for sure. They're going to kick your butt and you've got four people who you can lean on and be like, wait, when you felt that, how did you get through it? Uh, but you are all deserving. And just a message to everybody is that you are deserving. Like you're here for a reason. Um, you're amazing. And I, 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 I hope you can feel how much I respect you and your journey and what you've done. Like I truly look at you all and see heroes. And I know you may not see that or feel that, but you are so worthy and deserving of anything you want. And every middle schooler and high schooler who has a dream is worthy of that dream. Would you agree with that? And, and, and they should go after that. And I know that you all want to help those people to, to do that. Uh, I want to ask you just a couple more questions, and then we're going to wrap things up. You've been so generous, and uh, there's just so many things that I want to talk to you about. Real quickly, roommates, I, I'm sure that freaked some of you out. Not everybody's lived with someone before, like a stranger. Um, <laughs> does, does anyone want to offer some roommate advice to someone who's potentially weighing that as one of the reasons to go or not go? Uh, anybody here want to jump in? I didn't live on campus my first year, obviously, and I eventually found a place to live, um, but I lived in a studio by myself, 
And as independent as I am, and I'm sure all of you know how independent I am and know that I do a lot of things on my own anyway, I don't recommend it <laughs> at all. You feel so lonely and so disconnected, and it's so hard to find friends that way. So definitely find roommates, join clubs, because that's the only way to find roommates. That's how I found my roommates, was through a club. And even though they drive me nuts every day, they're the people who drag me out of my bed at 1 a.m. to go get pizza. So definitely join clubs and try and make friends. You got involved. You're, you're, you play club softball, right? Yes. Yeah, so you do club softball. You also are part of the diverse organization of business students. Um, you seem like you are just really involved now and have gotten involved. So going from your studio apartment to really getting involved has been, has been great. Anybody else, roommates? I know, Luis, you, you said your roommates ended up being a really good person. Was that just a random roommate situation or did you pick your roommate? Uh, no, we, we chose, I guess I, we both, like all of us came to a consensus that we wanted to be roommates. Right. Uh, so, these are just like resonate friends. Yeah. And yeah. just worked out over the years. Uh, living with living with these people worked out well. Okay, well, great. So roommates, you know, people shouldn't be freaked out about roommates. I think roommates, they're just people you live with. It's better to have someone. Oh, a quick question. Should you live with a friend? You know, <laughs> does that work out? Um, I think it was fine. <laughs> I love Faith. You know, she's she kind of reminds me of myself. She... She, she's pretty, you know, fun to be around, but she eats my food. That's what makes me mad. She always ate my food. I knew that was going to be brought up. <laughs> Dude, I knew. I was so it's mad when rice. I had made rice. rice. <laughs> I left it in the fridge, and I was going to eat it for dinner, and she had ate it before I got home. And then that same day, she drove home, so I couldn't even yell at her in person. Oh. You know? like, and she ate it your rice. Me. No. She always <laughs> ate my food. And we know it was like, it was hard for you to afford food. Totally. Right. Like, so <laughs> it was even worse that Faith was eating it uh, and driving away with a, with a full stomach when you came right. in the room. <laughs> did, did you all work through that? Were you able to talk through that situation? Oh, I taught her how to make her own rice. So now she knows how and to make I rice. Like, honestly, like... Abby, I feel like you're, it's like, you're saying it was like all the time, but it was like all <laughs> the time. Like, it was not all the time. <laughs> wow. Okay. I can it see. was like a few times. Oh. <laughs> right. But, <laughs> right. We could, we still there. Rice, <laughs> and, we knew the rice was going to come up. Faith knew the rice was going to come up. <laughs> I'm sorry to bring up the rice. I shouldn't have brought up the rice. I didn't bring up the rice. You brought up the Just, rice. To specify, it's Mexican rice, so it's not just like minute rice. Mm. It's Mexican rice. Did you make you make it it's like a special recipe? Yes. Oh, it sounds delicious. I love that. That um, was one of the reasons why I was excited to live with Abby because I knew that one way or another she was going to teach me how to make her rice. So I, I made her teach me. <laughs> and now you can make the rice. So everybody can. Everybody can have can have their rice. So yeah. uh, let's see. There's a couple a couple other things when it comes to life on campus. When it comes to alcohol. When it comes to drugs. When it comes to temptation. When it comes to uh, those things that sometimes uh, can derail people. Uh, you know, can you can you work through that? How do you how do you work through? all the temptation and stay on track and, and focus on academics and, you know, can you live a sober life on campus? So, you know, tell me about a Saturday night and, and how that works and, and how that other stuff plays into social life on campus. Is there someone who, um, is there someone here who likes to go out a lot? Tell me about a typical Saturday night in your life. School made me very much an introvert. So I was always at home. Um, I don't like partying, tried it, did not like it, don't, too many people, not my thing. So my Saturday night was always Netflix, popcorn, pizza, game night with my roommates, you know, pretty small, not partying and getting, you know, blackout drunk. That's not me. No. And you can still have a life and have friends and not do that. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anybody else a Saturday night? Let's see. Daniel, how about your Saturday night, man? Well, um, I mean, my Saturday night for my second year, 
to my first year looks a lot different, but um, I'll just put it in an example. So I'll give you two friends. I have one friend who loves to go party, who gets blacked out drunk like every other weekend and he does bad academically. But I have another friend who um, goes to parties, um, drinks a little bit and, you know, still is able to socialize. He does it more for a social thing. And I think there's a, definitely a fine line between you can always go out and have fun and experience that because, I mean, drinking and stuff in college is inevitable. It's going to happen. And um, it's always it always determined or it comes back to your values. And um, if you want to go experience that and get blacked out drunk, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend that. But if perhaps you want to go out and try something new and be social about it and have some fun with your friends, then, you know, I say go for it. It's a growing experience. Yeah. Does anybody else have anything to add when it comes to like being smart about being stupid or, you know, things you've seen or just some advice to just navigate this? Yeah. I feel like, yeah. With what Danny was saying, um, I feel like you have to like really kind of know yourself and kind of, and I feel like when you are having those kind of experiences, it's kind of good to kind of make some mistakes. So, you know, what exactly you're comfortable with and then you kind of know how you can still like succeed and still have fun at the same time so kind of those making those mistakes like in the first part of your of having those experiences and then yeah. when you know you're it's honestly worth it to that kind of came out kind of weird but i feel like you know what i'm saying <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I think I know what you're saying. Uh, Abby, what do you want to add to that? To add to that, um, if your main reason to go to college is to party and get blackout drunk, you can do that without spending $40,000 a year. Yeah, that's good advice. Yeah, <laughs> stay home if you just, you know, want to get drunk and party all the time or right. not spend money. Because it could really ruin your college, you know, career and leave a bad reputation. Yeah. When you guys are part of the scholarship, uh, the, especially the Ford scholarship, do you have to keep a minimum GPA? And is, you know, your behavior something that they monitor? I mean, you can't get arrested um, or you get the scholarship taken away. Um, but I don't, I, we do have a GPA uh, requirement, but I don't know what it is, honestly. Yeah. But so if you get arrested, then you could lose your scholarship? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or if we get like... Um, Obviously, like if we get caught with like drugs or alcohol. Yeah, I think kind of to add on to that, um, at least for me, I'm pretty sure maybe this kind of relates to Ruby as well. But since I do, I am on a full ride scholarship. And if I were to maybe do something stupid that would get my scholarship revoked, um, I think about that beforehand. And I think about the consequences of my actions. So if you have a lot to lose, then like Abby said, just stay home and you can have fun watching Netflix and relaxing every Saturday night. Yeah, that's really interesting. I didn't realize that you could lose that for those things, which would be devastating. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really helpful to, to know that as well. And also getting the scholarship, I imagine if you have a record, is it, you know, does that disqualify you from being a candidate? That's the first question. I don't know if you remember Ruby on the OSAC. They asked like, do you have any sort of like criminal record or they, they asked something along those lines. So that's the first question that I answered from the Ford. And the answer was no. <laughs> right, of, of course, of course it wasn't like too much suspense. <laughs> there, Right. Um, I, I just have like two more questions for you guys. You're, you're so generous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. It's, it's, it's just this incredible gift to have you here. Um, FAFSA, real quickly, FAFSA, filling out your FAFSA. How hard is it to fill out the FAFSA? Did you stumble with the FAFSA? What advice do you have for students who are filling out their FAFSA? For me, I say fill it out anyway if you even have plans to go to college or not because your plans could change at any minute. And there is a deadline for that, and they don't go back on that deadline. So fill it out every year anyway because you never know when you all of a sudden want to start going to college again. Um, and talk to someone who has done it before because it can make the process a lot easier. Yeah. Anybody else FAFSA advice? Yeah. Just kind of like what Abby was saying, just do it even if like 
because I know a lot of scholarships even require that you fill out your FAFSA. So, um, so if you don't even like fill out your FAFSA and you do it last minute, you're already giving away like a lot of scholarships you could have applied to. Right. So do it early too. Do your FAFSA quickly so you can qualify for some of these potential scholarships. Right. And then is it really hard? Did you, did you struggle with that? Were you able to get all the information? Daniel, tell me how hard it was to fill out the FAFSA and how you were able to get through that. So for me, um, my sister already filled out the FAFSA beforehand. So it was a lot easier, but I do know a lot of my friends who um, it was their first time filling it out. And since their parents, um, a lot of their information is, it's really kind of, it's not black and white. And it's really hard to find that information. And although it seems simple, um, definitely reach out to a counselor. Mrs. Rosen was a very big help for me, even though I had already kind of known how to figure it out because of my sister, but she was just an amazing, amazing resource. So reach out to people who, who know, high school counselors, uh, past students, um, past cousins, anything. Is, yes, Abby. Um, I would also say Anna Brown is a huge help for me and she also runs the Juntos program and they do FAFSA nights for, you know, um, migrant people who struggle with that and there's a lot of hoops to jump through there. So she knows a lot about that and she helped me with that the most. So I definitely say reach out to her too. Yeah. Did any of you reach out to any cultural groups or organizations? I know that, um, you know, I've done work with CAMP. Uh, that's a, a program for migrant uh, students of migrant workers. Do, are any of you part of any associations or groups or organizations related to your identity or ethnicity? I'm in the um, Latinx student union. Um, and that's pretty much just, we do have like meetings every week or every month. And then we do like events and that's like where I get to put a face to the community that I do have on campus, which I really love. I love the club. Um, I feel really connected to it. Yeah. I know that a lot of students, when they get to campus, they'll look to those things that they identify with. I know you were talking about being the only brown girl in that class, but then at the same time, you are able to then go to this, to Latinx, right? And connect and have that. Is that true? Like that then gave you that anchor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then like, I just kind of knew a lot of people that were going to school that are Latinx. Like all my friends are pretty much Latinx. Yeah. And it's, it's really like, it makes me feel like I have a community on campus, especially like being on a predominantly white campus. It's so hard to find those kinds of people that have the same struggles and same background as you. And it's, it feels so much more better when you do find those kinds of people. Right. So you need to seek those people out, but going to these organizations are, is an amazing way. And these people are nice, right? Ruby? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Like they're, they're like incredible. Right. I just can't emphasize that enough. Like they're so welcoming. And then when you need help, and a lot of times it's hard to ask for help. Do any of you struggle asking for help or did you struggle asking for help? Abby, of course we know. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> like, I'm doing it my own way. I'm living in a, I'm living in a studio. But yeah. like, and you ask for help all the time now, right? No. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, you're getting closer, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, asking for help is, is, is such a, a wonderful thing. Being part of your Ford Foundation, I know, helped you a lot as well, um, I'm sure, because you're surrounded by people who can help you and support you. And that's the common theme, is that so many of you, you're from Boardman, a tight-knit community. You go to a new place, surrounded by new people. You don't have all the same things that make you feel great, and then all of a sudden you struggle. And I've seen that that's, throughout our conversation, that's been a consistent piece. So it's finding your people, it's finding your places, and being able to go after what you want. As a first-gen student, any advice to other first-gen students out there? Definitely. I think one thing is just, like, be light on yourself. Like, don't like kind of like what Ruby was saying, like I, I do feel like I, from personal experience, like I I, um, I carry too much of that weight. And so like, just be light on yourself and don't, don't like that, that doesn't describe who you are. Like, I guess like deep down to your roots, that is who you are, but like it, it shouldn't. And that there's, there's a, like just because you're, I mean, like appreciate what your parents did for you, but at the same time, like realize that you're, you're, you're your own person. So yeah. yeah. Uh, to go off of that, I would say it's okay to not be perfect and your mistakes don't define you, but they definitely help, you know, pave your path and there's a lesson in every mistake. So you're going to make mistakes no matter what, just keep trying. Yeah. When you do something, something happens and it's not always exactly what we want it to be. Uh, 
the most rewarding, pleasurable, proud experience of your college career so far? I know, Daniel, you talked about going abroad. Uh, where did you go and what was that experience like? I went to Spain um, for four months and that was just a time where I grew the most. I grew more in those four months than I did in the past like five years, if I'm being completely honest with you. And it was just kind of immersing myself in that culture, even though Spanish is my first language, just immersing myself in that culture and experiencing that um, really helped me grow as a person. And did you have to pay for that? Did the school pay for it? How did you afford to go to Spain? Uh, fortunately, the Ford family paid for all that. Awesome. So you got like a free ride to Spain too. Like what a dream. Like that's insane. That's just so awesome that you could do that and you were able to grow so much. Does anyone else have an experience that they had that just really fills them with a sense of pride and joy? So I, I did go to Arkansas the same semester that Danny went. And I, I, I mean, it was, it was domestic, but I do feel like it was a cultural shock in the sense that I was the only like Ruby, I, I could probably relate to Ruby. That was the only white person or white person, the only brown person in like a predominantly black and white school. So I was like, I think in my entire time in that school, I probably saw like 10 brown people, to be honest. So <clears throat> it definitely uh, shaped me differently. So I, I would definitely encourage other students to to just travel abroad. Like, I think you'll discover yourself in so many ways if you travel abroad, so. Yeah, traveling and experiencing something new. Was anyone else gonna share something? And then I promise I'm gonna wrap things up. Um, was there anybody else? I went, I was able to go abroad and it was just, it was kind of really freeing in a way. And it was just, I really loved it. Where'd you go? What'd you do? Um, I went to Ireland, which was completely like opposite of what I like, you know, predominantly white, but it was really great because the Irish are so nice. Yeah. And it was, uh, that sounds amazing. It was paid for by the Ford Foundation, Ford yeah. Family. That's, yeah. so, that's so cool that you were able to do that. Okay. So uh, real quickly, I mean, real, real quick, just a round circle. I want to know your dream, dream job, dream career. Then, then we're going to, then we're going to do our last goodbye. Uh, Ruby, what's your dream job, dream career? Um, my dream job, I guess, would be to be helping people, um, because business and sociology are completely different things. Um, one's like, you know, one's all about the money and one's actually about like society and helping people. So I want to find a middle ground for that. Nice. Do you have a particular job in mind? Because if somebody's watching this and they want to give you that job, you know, this is like, this could live out here. I it is to be able to work on a uh, in a company of marketing campaign that specifically has to do with uh, inclusivity, um, specifically in diversity and stuff. So, nice, cool, Abby. What's your dream? Hmm. Well, there's many different things I can do, but sports has been a huge a huge influence on me, and it was an outlet for me when I was a kid growing up. So. Anything to do with business and sports to merge the two to create more of a safe space for kids growing up. Nice. So. Daniel, what about you? So my major kind of incorporates a lot of data. So anything to do with data, um, data science or business analytics would be great, great. But also incorporating my second major, which is Spanish. I'm still trying to figure that out. But just a part where I'm able to, to take my culture with me would be great as well. Do you have a, uh, like a company or a role or a position or something? Um, I've always wanted to work like, like at Intel. Nice. So that, that you'll work at Intel. I feel it. Awesome. Luis, what about you? Um, I feel like I might step on some toes here, but I think my dream is uh, to show the world that God is real. And I, I aim to do that with business and computer science. Uh, I, I talked about going to Arkansas and I felt like, uh, that's where I saw God move in ways. And uh, again, I, I'm probably stepping on toes here, but I, there was uh, 19 people in this one retreat that got physically healed from, I mean, it was, it was insane. But yeah, it, that's, that's my goal, to tell the world that God is real. And, your spirituality is a guiding light in your life? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's great. I'm, I, I feel bad that I didn't touch on that earlier because I think that the spirituality piece it's really something that people can lean on, especially during college and during that transition time. Uh, Faith, your dream, and then we're going we're gonna to wrap things up. 
I really want to be a traveling nurse, which kind of scares me, but I know that it would help me so much in the future because I know I would learn so much and like different systems of hospitals. So I'd be so prepared too. And I also like want to see the world and stuff. So I think that's a great way to incorporate the two. Oh, yeah. And there's so many cool retreats where people go and on uh, missions. And I actually know a couple people who, you know, when we're not on this, on this conversation, I can certainly share with you a little bit more about that. And the very last, the very, very last question, and we'll do a quick circle. If you can go back in time and give you a tip and talk to high school you and give you one, tip, what would you tell high school you? So Faith, what would you tell high school you? Oh my goodness. Well, I would tell myself oh. to... Sorry, my dog is like being weird in the background. <laughs> but um, I would tell myself to follow my gut like before I mentioned that. And I would also tell myself to try to experience more and to hang out with a lot more people and build better relationships. Nice. Thank you. Luis, what would you tell yourself if you could go back in time and give high school Luis a little bit of advice or insight to make life easier? Don't be so weird. And uh, yeah, just like let loose, like, like nobody's like, you, you're like so overwhelmed with your own thoughts that you think everybody's uh, thinking about you or like you somehow like personify the, the the picture of like it's about you and it's not so kind of just told myself that just let loose like nobody really cares so yeah totally ruby if you can go back in time and give high school you a tip or advice what would you tell you to make life easier um probably to just make more friends in class so i could have people to study with because i still struggle with it um but i definitely know if i just told myself to do it i probably would have allowed myself to do it earlier on and not still struggle with it so yeah daniel if you can go back in time and give high school you advice what would you tell you i would tell myself to to focus on myself more and that sometimes it's okay to be selfish because you're investing in yourself it's perfect uh all of them are perfect abby if you can go back in time and give high school abby advice what would you tell you I would tell high school Abby that it's okay to ask for help and that it's okay to be vulnerable because it's a part of human life. Thank you. You are all so amazing, so incredible, so generous, so kind. I'm so grateful that we can have the chance to have this conversation. If anyone has questions about any of the things that you mentioned, and we're going to include your schools, your majors, all the little uh tidbits and, and information that you've included here with these interviews. If someone wants to reach out to you, are you okay with them reaching out to you? Are you okay? You could just nod. Are you okay with people asking you questions? Like truly um, you're safe. You're comfortable with that, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So if there's anybody who has any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to all of our panelists about anything we've talked about. And we've talked about a lot of different things. Is there anybody that needs to do any damage control before we end this? Anybody want to clear anything up and you're going to be like, oh man, I wish I didn't say that. Or, oh, I need to explain this or any damage control. This is it. Want to talk about the rice anymore? <laughs> Let's the rice. bury that. Yeah. Where the rice is gone. Okay. Well, I wanted to give you all an opportunity. I want to thank Faith, Luis, Ruby, Abby, Daniel. I want to thank all of you for watching this for participating in this. I'm so grateful that I can be here with you. I'm so grateful to be in your corner. Thank you so much, Riverside High School alumni. I'm so grateful that we can have this evening together. And I look forward to continuing conversations and being in your corner as you all continue your journey. Thank you, everybody. I'm grateful to be here and I look forward to continuing the conversation. Thanks, everybody.